Have you ever wondered what would happen if you stopped eating for three days straight? It's a bold question, isn't it? To answer that, let's first take a look at what happens in your body after you finish a meal. You see, your body enters an anabolic state where the food you've just consumed is broken down into simpler molecules that serve as fuel. This fuel ensures your organs can function as they should. Now, the star of this process is an organ nestled in your abdomen, the pancreas. It's the producer of insulin, a hormone that oversees the process of breaking down and metabolizing primarily carbohydrates, but also protein. This insulin helps your body's cells to absorb the glucose found in your bloodstream after you've eaten. On the other hand, dietary fats are transformed into fatty acids. These acids are used by your body for energy, and they also play a role in a variety of biological processes, for example, testosterone production. Any excess fatty acids are converted back into triglycerides, and most of these triglycerides are stored in your body fat, also known as adipose tissue. Meanwhile, any extra carbohydrates from your meal are first converted into glycogen, which is essentially a string of glucose molecules that can be stored and used later. This glycogen is mostly stored in your liver and muscles. However, since there's a biological limit to how much glycogen you can store, once that limit is reached, the remaining excess energy is converted into triglycerides and stored as body fat. This is the routine process that our bodies go through when we eat throughout the day. It's like clockwork, a cycle that repeats with every meal. But what if you decided to disrupt this cycle? What if you chose to press pause on eating for three days straight? An intriguing thought, isn't it? Stay tuned as we delve into this fascinating topic. After about 6 to 10 hours of fasting, most of the glucose that's still circulating in your bloodstream will be used for fuel. This is when your body begins a significant shift from an anabolic state, where it's growing and storing, to a catabolic state, where it's breaking down and using stored energy. As the glucose from your last meal is depleted, your body starts to tap into its glycogen reserves. Glycogen, remember, is that string of glucose molecules stored in your liver and muscles. As your body needs energy, it sends a signal to your pancreas to release a hormone called glucagon. Despite the similar sounding names, glucagon and glycogen are not the same. Glucagon's role is to tell your body to release glycogen and fatty acids, essentially turning stored energy into usable fuel. Now if your last meal was low in carbohydrates, your body may begin producing ketones as an energy source within these early hours of fasting. Ketones are chemicals your liver produces when it breaks down fat cells into fatty acids. It's a way for your body to keep the lights on, so to speak, when glucose isn't readily available. During this transition period, you may notice some changes in your blood glucose and ketone levels. In the first six hours of fasting, your blood glucose levels will start to climb, peaking around the sixth hour. After that, they'll gradually start to decline as your body uses up the available glucose. On the flip side, your ketone levels will do pretty much the opposite. They'll start off low, but as your body delves deeper into its fasting state and begins producing ketones as an energy source, these levels will gradually rise. This rise becomes especially noticeable after approximately the 10th hour of fasting. So, what we're seeing here is a remarkable metabolic shift. Your body is transitioning from relying on a steady supply of food for energy to efficiently using its own stored resources. It's a process that's been honed over thousands of years of human evolution and one that holds intriguing potential for our health and well-being. During those first six hours, your blood glucose levels will start to elevate, and then they'll gradually decline. Meanwhile, your ketone levels will gradually rise, especially after approximately the 10th hour of fasting. Before you ever hit that 10th hour mark, if you're accustomed to eating three meals per day or you regularly eat a high-carb diet, you'll probably experience hunger and low energy levels. Now, let's plunge into the effects of habitual eating and high-carb diets on the fasting process. When we eat regularly, our bodies get into a rhythm, expecting food at certain times of the day. This is why you might feel hungry around your usual meal times even when you're fasting. It's your body's way of asking, hey, isn't it time for a snack? This sensation of hunger, however, is often more psychological than physiological. You're not starving, your body is just used to its routine. On the other hand, if you're someone who consumes a high-carb diet, the transition to fasting could be a bit more challenging. Carbohydrates, especially simple carbs like sugars and refined grains, are quickly broken down into glucose, which your body uses for immediate energy. When you suddenly stop eating, your body's primary energy source is cut off. This can lead to feelings of fatigue, brain fog, and even mood swings. 
this doesn't mean that fasting is harmful. On the contrary, it's a natural process that our bodies are perfectly equipped to handle. It's just that the transition might be a bit uncomfortable, especially if you're used to eating frequently or consuming a lot of carbs. With that said, it's important to remember that these sensations of hunger and low energy are temporary. As your body shifts from an anabolic to a catabolic state, it starts tapping into its internal energy reserves, namely your stored fat, for fuel. This metabolic switch not only provides your body with a steady supply of energy, but also triggers several beneficial hormonal changes. If you ignore this hunger and continue fasting for at least 10 hours, your body will start to increase the levels of a hormone produced by the pituitary gland called human growth hormone, otherwise known as HGH. This hormone plays a crucial role in the fasting process, which we will explore in the next scene. Stay tuned! Fasting can actually increase human growth hormone, or HGH, just as effectively as exercise, stress, and very low blood sugar, also known as hypoglycemia. Let's delve into the fascinating role of HGH in the fasting process. The pituitary gland, a small pea-sized organ located at the base of your brain, is the main producer of HGH. This hormone is released into the bloodstream, where it travels to various tissues and cells throughout the body, orchestrating a multitude of biological tasks. One of the key roles of HGH during fasting is to help maintain muscle mass. Now you might be thinking, wait, how can muscle grow when there's no food coming in? Well here's the deal. While HGH isn't likely to directly lead to muscle growth during fasting due to the lack of nutrients, it plays an essential role in delaying the breakdown of muscle, helping to preserve it. This is crucial, especially for those who may be concerned about muscle loss during a fasting period. But the benefits of HGH don't stop at muscle preservation. This hormone is also associated with enhanced exercise performance. Yes, even in a fasting state, HGH can help you maintain your energy levels and physical performance. It's like having a secret weapon that keeps you going, even when you're not fueling your body with food. And there's more. HGH is known to contribute to better body composition. It helps to increase metabolism, promoting the use of stored fat for energy, which can lead to a leaner physique. This is another reason why fasting is often linked with weight loss. Furthermore, HGH is associated with stronger immunity. This hormone plays a role in the production and function of white blood cells, which are the body's primary defense against infections and illnesses. So, even while fasting, your body has a way of keeping its defense system up and running. Lastly, HGH contributes to faster recovery from injuries. This is because it stimulates collagen synthesis in the skeletal muscle and tendons, enhancing the healing of injuries and wounds. Although HGH is unlikely to lead to muscle growth in the absence of nutrients while you're fasting, it's believed to be responsible for delaying the breakdown of muscle, so it helps prevent muscle loss while fasting. So, what have we learned about what happens to the body during a three-day fast? We've journeyed from the anabolic state, where we feast and our bodies break down food into simpler molecules for fuel, to the catabolic state, where our bodies start to utilize stored reserves for energy. This transition is an incredible testament to our body's adaptive capabilities. In the anabolic state the pancreas produces insulin, a hormone that aids in the breakdown and absorption of carbohydrates and proteins. Dietary fats are transformed into fatty acids, which our bodies use for energy and various biological processes. Any excess fatty acids and carbohydrates are converted into triglycerides and stored as body fat. As we transition into a fasting state our bodies shift gears. Around 6 to 10 hours into the fast our glucose supply starts to dwindle and we enter the catabolic state. Here the pancreas releases glucagon, a hormone that signals our body to tap into stored glycogen and fatty acids for energy. If our last meal was low in carbohydrates, our bodies might start producing ketones as an alternative energy source. Interestingly, our blood glucose levels and ketone levels move in opposite directions during this phase. Now, what about habitual eating and high-carb diets? If you're used to eating three meals per day or consume a lot of carbs, you might initially experience hunger and low energy levels during a fast. But if you push past this, your body responds by increasing the levels of human growth hormone, HGH. HGH is a powerful hormone that can enhance muscle growth, exercise performance, immunity and metabolic rate, among other things. While fasting it helps delay the breakdown of muscle, protecting against muscle loss. So there you have it. The science of fasting is intricate and fascinating, revealing the remarkable resilience and adaptability of our bodies.
Understanding the science behind fasting can help us make more informed decisions about our dietary habits and overall health. Remember, before embarking on any fasting regimen, it's always wise to consult with a healthcare professional.